Hi guys, Andy here, and in this video I'm going to be answering uh, many of the questions or the common questions about chords primarily um, that have been come up in the comments to all my videos. I get many emails every day and I've started answering a lot of these questions on my Facebook page. Um, so click the link to that in the description to below if you want to kind of get more of these, but I decided to start doing them in videos as well. So um, yeah, let's take a look first of all. Chris Farley is God, says, so the chorus is the same and the strumming pattern is the same. This is referring to the song Free Falling, um, which is one of the songs, there's many songs early on in my beginners course, which are all the same chord sequence all the way through. The reason for that is it's simpler to learn, but also the main goal of any song at the first three levels, at least of my beginners course, is to enable you guys to straight away be playing along to real songs, playing along to the record all the way through. And that's gonna be so much easier if you can do it uh, with one chord sequence keeping it going. And if we're wanting you to repeat certain motions like this song, Free Falling, is specifically for that D to G change, really getting that solid. That's what level three of my beginner's course is entirely all about, because it's a change that many people do struggle with. It doesn't come straight away and they can't kind of play good strumming patterns with them or use them in the rock riffs like Highway to Hell. Um, so, just to give you guys a quick uh, inclination of what I do kind of in private lessons with students who have had a go at kind of a fair few songs on the beginners course, you've maybe picked them from all levels and you're just picking your favorites and you think, hey, I can play these chords, so this is okay. But what you're not addressing is there might be too much structure in the song to play along to the record, or you may not be able to get that uh, strumming pattern that we're wanting with the higher level chords that you're trying to take on. So if you have personally, anyone watching this video, if you have never played a song all the way through or even played along to the record or a drum beat or anything, you need to choose a song that just has the same chord sequence all the way through and then you're going to keep playing it for the entire song. And by playing it for the entire song, it will be more entertaining for you because, yay, you're playing along to a cool song. But it is essentially a technical exercise, okay? It's an exercise. Can you keep that chord sequence going for three or four minutes? Because that is the length of most pop songs. So Lucy Hunt asks, this might seem like a dumb question, but what makes chords a specific note? The combinations just seem random to me and the individual notes in a chord are all the same. Um, okay, so your question there is a little, uh, it's kind of the wrong way around. What makes chords a specific note? It should be what makes, what single notes uh, make a chord. So um, we're going to just cover a few definitions first of all. So a note is one single pitch. And it's many of those single pitches, mainly three or more of those single notes that make a chord. So um, this could be on the piano, like I've just played, it could be on your guitar, or that couldn't be the case for a male vocal harmony or a string quartet or anything. One single pitch is just that, ah, one single pitch. A chord needs to be kind of three or more of those pitches at once, but it will tend to be the same notes kind of played again. Um, so we'll be looking more at this in future lessons, uh, a bit more music theory, so the reason I haven't got too many music theory videos at the moment is we're doing mainly absolute beginners lessons and learning more music theory isn't going to be able to make you play any better. It's just your fundamental understanding for when you want to start to create your own music generally. That's when you want to start to get into music theory and kind of at the end of my beginners course is where that will be coming into play. So unless you're doing songs that are at level eight or even nine of my course online, um, there's no reason yet to go too much into the music theory thing, though we will be uh, bringing some of that in from level P -M -M -C -O -Y -V. 5. P-M-M-C-O-Y-V, seems like an eye test this. Um, do you ever offer your lesson series through other private sites? Um, no, it's all exclusive to my one channel, Andy Guitar, um, but I've done some lessons for Truefire, um, which I've shared on my actual website as well as part of a guitar competition and you can actually still vote for me I believe over the next week or so so click in the link below please vote for me to win this competition um, just so I can get more exposure from my free lessons really 
Catherine Hewitt asks, can you do a tutorial for Mardi Bum, please? Um, Mardi Bum is a song by the Arctic Monkeys, who are an absolutely quality band. Um, I will be doing... The Arctic Monkeys songs are fantastic for fairly you know, kind of improver rock riffs and uh, some fairly easy guitar solos. Guitar solos aren't very simple, but um, there's some really approachable ones in a lot of the Arctic Monkey stuff, especially the first album and the newest album are really quality for that. So we're going to be doing loads of Arctic Monkey songs, but I've got my priority of my absolute beginner's course at the moment. That's going to be more for lead guitar stuff. So I'll be getting around to that about February 2015 with my current lesson kind of schedule and everything. Jacob Smits asks, can I just keep my first finger on chord four and move my middle finger between chord five and chord three? It works a, le a lot better during the chord changes. This was a comment on my first video with the two easiest chords that you can play on guitar. So an E minor and an A sus two, which is E minor like this and then A sus two like this. So with the fingering for those specific changes, Always use your first two fingers, man. I don't know why you'd be using um, any other fingering for these two. But what I have seen quite a lot in the past is people kind of use different fingering um, f finger placement for chords. So I've seen maybe an E chord played like this, which is going to sound exactly the same. It's just with the middle finger. This is a traditional E chord. And then this is the fingering I've kind of seen in the past. Uh, what else have I seen for an A? we can get three in a line, or for an E minor, we can just get this first finger off rather than doing the first two fingers for an example. Um, so with different fingering, them, there are many ways to skin a cat, okay? There's different ways that we can play the exact same chord. But the reason I ask you to do certain fingering is because, like my, how my beginner's course is set up, um, what other chords are going to happen in the song or what's the specific sequence and can we keep certain fingers down so yes if we're doing E major and then playing an E minor it's nice and easy to take off our first finger okay but then this way of playing an E minor which I do see people play quite a lot a common chord with E minor is going to be G now that's only any good if you're playing this way of playing a G if you're going back to your first three fingers like this that's making the change kind of harder for yourself. So um, the way of playing a G there is kind of with two, three, and four, which again, I've seen on some beginners' websites, they teach this. It's not wrong, it's just not the way that I teach. I teach more this G with the same three notes played, but played with your first three fingers, or the kind of Oasis G that I promote in my videos, where we're keeping the third and little finger down to try and keep one finger down between all your changes because it does sound better if we're having one note ringing out. It stops the big space between your chord changes. So I'm going to leave it there for my first kind of question and answer video. Um, please do email me if you have any questions and I'm going to be making more of these direct answers for you. Uh, if you would like to send me video questions, that would be absolutely fantastic and I will try and answer them absolutely to, to the best of my ability. Thank you very much guys and bye for now.